good day guys welcome to my youtube channel in today's video i would like to take you through the various components of a plc and their function uh, i'm trying to prevent information overload so i will try to take it bit by bit but if i'm too fast you can write on the comments if i'm leaving some items behind but in my previous video, I did mention that you get a compact PLC and a modular PLC. So a compact PLC is this one, where everything is built into one unit. The CPU is there, the communications card is here, the analog inputs, the digital inputs, and the analog outputs. Everything is built into one unit. Like I said, this one is for smaller projects. And when you want to when you've got fewer inputs and fewer outputs but once you get to bigger projects you move to this type of a PLC which is a modular PLC in front of me I have a Siemens Simatic S7 1500 but even if you are working with the Allen Bradley PLC you are working with GE Fanuc General Electric you are working with a Festo Delta PLC various brands Mitsubishi you'll probably get modules like these ones so let me start from the left on the left we have an is the cpu that's a central processing unit of your plc but it's, it also has got a built-in power supply in it so that's where you supply the voltage and the voltage gets transferred to power all the other modules on the right this is where the program sits that's where once we've done the programming, we will download the program into the CPU. This is the brains of the PLC. That's where the decisions are being made. But on this S71500, they also built in the comms card into it. So this is a comms module. Uh, when I talk about comms, it's communication. That's how the PLC speaks to other devices in the field and also the cards here. Yeah. So it a plc mos is responsible for running the plant for managing the plant so it must receive data from the field devices and it must also send data to the field devices this is why you've got the communications card because there must be communication between the field devices and the plc and in some cases between the plc and the hmi in other cases the pc it's between the plc and other plc's like you can see they've got a memory card that's where you can download your PLC, your PLC memory into so that even if there's a power off this PLC usually have a built-in battery that can last for years so that even if power goes off but the program is safe there in the memory so the CPU is where the brains are it's where everything is being decided that's a re the, the, the computer part of the PLC okay but let's move to the a little bit to the right. Uh, we have a digital input card. I hope my camera is clear. Let's just focus a bit. Digital. Okay, I think that's much. Uh, that's a better image now. On the left, you're getting a digital input card. The digital input card you usually connect to it all the digital inputs for example a switch or a push button or a sensor or a proxy it can be a proximity switch or a limit switch all those are inputs because they are bringing information into the plc so they will be wired into a digital input card the next door to next to a digital input you get a digital output card the dq it's a 16 bit 24 volts digital output card that's where like the word says digital output it's where you connect all your field devices all right ish apologies for the glitch so this is a digital output like you can see digital outputs means it's what the plc is controlling in the field it can be a valve can be a motor can be a lamp any device that is waiting for the plc to command so those are like slave devices now we move to the third one this one 
it's uh, that one is actually an analog input. So this again, the word input is telling you it's what we are reading to the PLC. But now the difference between a digital input and an analog input is that a digital input is can either be a one or a zero, on or off. Like a switch, a switch can either be on or off. A push button can either be pressed or released. A sensor can either be made or not activated. But when it comes to analog, those are inputs that are, are neither on or off. For, for an example, a temperature. A temperature is not either on or off. A temperature can be zero degrees, can be one degrees, 20 degrees, 100 degrees, and so on. So those inputs, we are, we are also feeding them into the PLC. It can be from a pressure transmitter, can be from a level transmitter, can be from, from various field devices. But again, it's an input that is analog. Those ones, you will wire them into the analog input card. All right. Then after the, the analog input cards, we're going to have uh, analog output. Again, these are devices that are neither on nor off. For example, if we can talk about digital outputs, a lamp can either be lighted, enabled to come on, or disabled to go off. There's nothing in between. So that lamp will be connected to a digital output. But if we can talk, for example, about a positioner, a positioner that controls the valve, it can get a command of 10%, 20%, 50%, and so on. If we talk about a variable speed drive that runs a motor, it can either be slowed down fast uh, or driven to a faster speed. So those ones will be connected to the analog output card. Okay. Uh, I hope it still makes sense. Uh, okay. Then if you move to the other side, I just had more digital ins. This is a, a digital in, but from an older version of Siemens Step 7 S7300 PLC. This one is an analog in, but it's written RTD. This one is usually used specifically for temperature. RTD stands for resistive temperature detectors. So the, your PT100s will be connected into this one. Digital output again, as we discussed it in the, uh, just now. Another analog input. Another explore is this one. It's called the optical link module, OLM. This one is usually used when the PLC has to communicate to a, a, a network that is on a fiber let's say you've got a field device that is few kilometers away and you want to run it to the same plc the communication may be from the plc and other devices nearby is via profibus but that one specific network uh, or device or section of the plant is running on fiber this olm is just con a conversion from fiber to profibus and also from profit bus to fiber so you will have an optical link module this side and also on the other side for on the transmitting side transmitting side of the plc which is closer to the plc and another opt link module at the field where the data is being received so you are just converting your comms from profit bus to fiber okay and that is not a topic for today but i just wanted you to understand what's the purpose of that one and uh, then we also get this communication card. Uh, actually, it's a network switch. Let's say you've got a PLC and other devices that you want to, co uh, to connect together on the same network. You program this network switch to have a specific Ethernet address, and then all the other devices come and connect to it. They can communicate. This becomes like a, a central point where one device or a gateway where the, the other devices can communicate. All right, like uh, we did discuss a little bit about this one. We can zoom in a bit. This side, you you have AO, that side, analog output, just one. Analog input, just one. Like I said, the compact PLC, you can use it for fewer, for a project with fewer inputs and fewer outputs. Again, you've got 24 volts DC inputs. Those are digital inputs. And then at the bottom, we've got digital outputs this year at the bottom here there are relay outputs those are digital output this one can also is communicating the comms network is via um what you call it is <coughs> via the ethernet or profinet network 
Okay, let's continue a bit. Uh, we did talk about the HMI. It's a human machine interface. It can be connected to the PLC and it can also be an input output device because an HMI you can press the screen. When you press the screen, you are sending a command into the PLC. Okay, oh, so like I was saying, the HMI can be an input or output device, meaning you can send information into the PLC, but also the PLC can send information back to the HMI for displaying. Okay, um, then the next one is a power supply. Its function is straightforward. You, you give it 220 volts, you get 24 volts out. So for those components that require 24 volts to run, you don't power them straight from your ESCOM supply or from your national grid. You power them via this power supply. This side, we've got an S7400. I won't dwell much on it, but on the left is the power supply built in into it. And then there's a CPU with a built-in comms card. And there's also a CP card there. Like you can see those ports, that's where you can connect other devices in the network. And apologies for my dirty hands. I've been working on this uh, material. Oh, okay. On the other side, you've got a Sematic Field PG. That's your, P your PC. It's basically a laptop, but it's designed, it's used for programming this uh, PLC. So mostly it will come installed with Siemens softwares. Okay. I think that's it for today. Um, if you have got any questions or, or any clarity skin questions, you can share them on the comments. Uh, I, I really apologize for the break in the video. In between, I got a bit distracted. But I think I have covered the most important components. Uh, at first glance, they can be a bit intimidating. But once you understand the function and the purpose of each component, then you will understand better how the whole thing works together. Okay, thank you so much for watching this far. Uh, stay tuned for more videos. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.